people say, oh yeah, well, let's go listen to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, not that way. <laughs> let's go ahead and open up with prayer real quick. Father, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for today. We thank you for just what you're doing right here on the earth. We thank you for what you're doing in our nation. We thank you, Lord, that you care about us. And Lord, we thank you that you are so involved in even the very details of our lives. I ask tonight that as um, we are listening to the word that's being spoken, that it would just penetrate our hearts and it would be like seed that's planted in good soil. I pray, Father, that you would anoint Pastor Tim with that, that fresh oil so that it's, it, what he speaks is directly from you. And Father, I ask that tonight as we worship, that it would be just a sweet savor to you, something that you so enjoy. We want you to enjoy tonight's service as much as we want to enjoy it ourselves. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Thank God. Be lifted up. Glory. I've got a feeling that I'm going to break the 30-minute rule tonight. I'm just going to get that out there because I, I have got a lot of information. <laughs> Who knows? I just wanted to get, I just wanted to make sure we... Got that out there. <laughs> Turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 139. Psalms 139. We're going to be talking tonight about the imprint or the signature of God on our lives tonight. There's so much that we could share, but I'm, I'm trying to be choosing just and where I go, what direction I go here with this. Psalms 139, <clears throat> start with verse 19. Sorry, verse 13. For you, reformed my, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there was none of them. Hallelujah. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, our genetics, God created our bodies so amazingly that, you know, when you get to studying this, this stuff, uh, you can just study for days on it uh, because it just keeps going. But God created us in such marvelous uh, ways. And when you look at the uh, way that our body works, the uh, cells in our bodies, the DNA strands and things like that, you know, anybody that studies that, and I've read, I've read several uh, scientific journals on it, and, and, and a lot of them, you know, they, 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 they try to edge around creation. You know, they just don't want to go there. But yet they have to go there because it's so amazing how we're made and, um, and that travels down through generations, and God has made us to where we are, we are genetic expressions of our mother and our father's history. You tonight are a culmination of generations of history, and that comes out in, in uh, different children. We received 23 chromosomes from our mother, 23 chromosomes from our father's, each egg and sperm cell is a unique engineered package 
from different parts of our combined history. None of them are alike. They're all engineered packages that create an individual person. Amen. <laughs> 23. And when, when those DNA strands begin to come together, they're, they're separate strands, and as they come together, they, they, they lock in place. And as they lock in place, as that baby's forming, they begin to lock in place, it determines the color of your eyes for the rest of your life. And from now on, as long as you're alive, that DNA strand will continually cause the cells in your eyes to, re, to, to create the same color over and over and over. No matter how many thousands of times it has to do it, it's, it's programmed in you, and, and God created you that way. I've got a, a, a photo of uh, my uh, dad's uncle. His name was John, John Snyder. And he had a little bit of a crazy eye, but uh, matter of fact, he was crazy. <laughs> he was one of the funniest guys, but he, but he was crazy. But uh, uh, I've got a nephew, a great nephew, my brother's grandson. And when you put their pictures together, even though... Uh, my brother's grandson didn't come from his line. You put the two pictures together, and they look almost the same. I showed him to his I showed him to his mom the other day, and I said, "Isn't this amazing? You know that package got delivered in a whole other family, and yet they look alike." My dad always told me that I look just like his grandpa. Matter of fact, before my dad passed away, that I would come to the house. And, and he would say, oh, I, I, th I thought you were grandpa. <laughs> Made me feel kind of old, but. <laughs> you know, when a 92-year-old man's telling me I look like his grandpa, that <laughs> <laughs> But he's, he said, you look, you look so much like him. He said, I, I constantly think I, I'm seeing my grandpa. Those DNA, DNA packages are passed down, and we are a culmination of history, and God created us to be that way. And so all of that comes together and makes us who we are in different parts. There's 23 pairs of chromosomes. They are formed into two strands of DNA called the double helix. They end up having two strong uh, strands on each side, and then there are, there are these... Um, can't remember the name of them. There's these strands in between ever so often in the DNA that ties it together and holds it together and that DNA always stays together. There are 92 strands of DNA in each human cell. A strand of DNA is three foot long. And there's 92 of them in every cell. There are uh, 37.2 trillion cells in our body. Each, each chain of DNA, which is three foot long, contains four nucleotides, base pairs, and every one of them have four ingredients in them, and that's adenine, guanine, thymine, and, and uh, cytosine. And so it's ATCG. And every line, every bar of that DNA has those four letters. And if it's A, then the other side is going to be T. If it's C, the other side will be G. But it all depends on where those are placed. It's kind of like a computer. You know, ones and zeros is how you, how you pro, uh, program a computer, and that tells it what to do. And our body, however these, these uh, bars are designed with different letters in them, then that is what determines how we are created and what we look like. And so there's, there's three billion letters in a, in a strand of DNA. 92 of them in a cell, three foot long, three billion letters in one strand of DNA. 
That just happened one day in a quagmire, this cell just suddenly all of a sudden started forming these DNA strands and, and they, they started coming together, you know, and determining what color your eyes is going to be, you know, and, and, and it, it started coming together in this cell and then it turned into a frog or a fish and then it crawled out of, of the water and, and turned into a monkey, climbed up a tree, fell out, broke off its tail and grabbed a suitcase and became a man. If I had the faith of an atheist, I could move more mountains. They have a lot of faith. <laughs> to, believe, to believe this thing just, just suddenly happened. Amen. In each strand, there's a sulfuric bridge that holds the strands together, which appears after every 10 bars of DNA, every five bars of DNA, every six bars of DNA, and every five bars of DNA. In your DNA... These strands that hold it together are in the same sequence over and over and over. 10, 5, 6, 5, 10, 5, 6, 5, 10, 5, 6, 5, 10, 5, 6, y'all say that with me, 10, 5, 6, 5, 10, 5. Sounds like we're, sounds right like we're counting off a drummer's you know, beat or something. But it's the same sequence over and over and over. I want you to stop and think tonight that God created us in his image. In, in Genesis, it says, let us create man in our image and according to our likeness, okay? Now, we were quite, when God finished creating us, he said, it's good. It's good. Amen. It's good. So, these strands, these 10, 5, 6, 5 strands, a sequence that repeats every little bit, I mean continually, in every DNA strand, 92 strands in every cell, you got 37.2 trillion cells in your body, and in each one of those, 10, 5, 6, 5 is repeated over and over and over and over in these three foot long strands you getting lost in all the numbers? It's amazing. You know, what, what God created is absolutely amazing. Now, the importance of that is 10565, 10565. I wonder why God made them 10565, 10565. Wonder why God put that in our bodies in every DNA strand. Since the DNA is what tells us who we are and what we're going to be, that is the engineer of our life. That's what engineers us. That's what engineers our children. That's what, when, when you look at your children, you say, well, that was, that was, that's her mom right there. Or that's his dad, you know. And uh, you never know. I mean, every child is different. You see different characteristics come out in each one of them. Austin's little girl, you know, she, we've got, she's the fourth grandchild, and somehow she got my attitude. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I mean, she can look at me with a dead look and put me in my place, just, I mean, just like that. And I just stand there looking at her thinking, we're, we're going to have a lot of fights. <laughs> she thinks her goal in life, her, her job in life is to scold me about something every time I see her. I mean, she's on me. The other day she was out on, I probably told you this, the other day she was out on the back porch and I went out there drinking coffee in the morning and I had this protein bar and I put the, pat, the wrapper down and forgot. She went out on the back porch and all of a sudden I, I'd gotten home and all of a sudden I heard her say, Papa! <laughs> I walked out there. She's just three years old, just turned three years old. She held that wrapper up to me and said, you made a mess on this porch and you didn't even clean it up. Needless to say, I walked over, took the wrapper away from her, and went through, the, went through in the trash. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. And she does all this with a straight face. I mean, we are fearfully and wonderfully made is what the Word of God says. Now, this 10565, when you put that with the Jewish um, alphabet or numerical system, Every Jewish number has a letter. And when you, when you put it together, it, it, spells, it spells Y-H-V-H. Does anybody know what Y-H-V-H in Hebrew says? What? The name of God? <laughs> How many times does our body every day scream the name of God? Every DNA strand in your body, 92 of them in every cell, three feet long, 10, 5, 6, 5, 10, 5, 6, 5, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. You know, an artist wouldn't be worth his salt if he didn't sign his masterpiece. Come on, somebody. I mean, how many times did God sign our bodies? How many times did he, did he say, you belong to me? Our bodies, every new cell that is made, and our body makes, makes billions of them every day. Every new cell that made, is made comes out declaring the name of his creator. You created me. I am, I am a cell of the creator, amen. He branded us and he signed our DNA we, we wouldn't even have known that. Somebody just sat down one day and got to looking at that and thought, 10, 5, 6, 5, 10, 5, wonder, wonder how that fits with the Jewish. Well, wonder, and all of a sudden, here's Yahweh. I wonder, I wonder who gave him the, Jew, the Hebrew language. Yeah. I had a Hebrew scholar tell me the other day, he said, listen, before you die, you need to learn Hebrew. I said, why? He said, well, you want to be able to communicate when you get to heaven. <laughs> I said, I, I think he knows hillbilly. <laughs> but Yahweh, this spells out the Hebrew name for God in English, it's Yahweh. Just postulate with me for just a minute. What if, what if this went even deeper? If, you, if we really believe that God signed his name to our DNA, if we believe that, and then man sinned and fell away from God, he said you, you, we were dead in our trespasses and sin. God didn't recognize us anymore. I'm not sure what happened. I spent the whole afternoon trying to find something to tell me what happened to the DNA and, and the name of God and how all this works. I don't know what happened. But I know we become lost. God didn't recognize his creation anymore. He said, where are you? I don't, I don't know you. I don't see you. you. I don't see my reflection. What happened to you? Everything got turned off until one day somebody went up on a mountain to meet with God. And when he went up on that mountain to meet with God, he was in the presence of God. How many know you, you, you reveal what you've been looking at? You, you, shy, you, you, you reflect what you've been admiring. And Moses went up on the mountain, and there on that mountain, he looked into God. He got to see his creator. He got to, and when he came down off that mountain, his DNA couldn't help but glow with the name of God and the life of God. Is that he, he literally glowed with the presence of God. 
Why? Because that DNA had just got in the presence of the creator and that, that presence of the creator activated the name of God inside of Moses and he began to glow with the Shekinah glory that comes from the creator in the presence of God. And, and he come down off the mountain and the people were afraid. Why? Because he wasn't looking like a man. He, didn't, he, didn't, he, he was shining. He didn't look normal. He had just been in the presence of the creator and all of those things 37.2 trillion cells with all that DNA strands and that 10565 declaring he began, he couldn't help but just glow in the presence of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we, we are made in his image and in his likeness. That's our first view of the regenerating power of God. That's our first view of what coming in contact with his presence is like. Hallelujah. I have a feeling some of you are gonna, gonna start shining like, like LED lights in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. You get in his presence, you can't help but be transfigured. You can, something's gonna happen to you. Amen. Praise God. Oh, where was I at? 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I kept telling myself, now teach tonight. Don't preach, teach. But I can't help it. It just gets in me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12. Now listen to this. This is all about the body. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Amen. Notice, notice how Paul is saying that God, is, God has a claim on our physical bodies. And God hath raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For, two, for the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body, now listen, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? I can't explain this, and I, I wish I could have found a way to explain it. I was just a while ago, I was praying, God, somehow, give me revelation, help me understand this. But somehow in, in Ephesians chapter two, he says, y'all were dead, your trespasses and sin, but he made you alive together. I don't know how, but I believe that somehow God turns his name back on inside of our DNA and he takes claim of our bodies as well as our soul and our spirit and when we're, we come back to him, we are made alive. We are activated and made alive. Hallelujah. I don't think we understand this like we ought to understand it. Amen. We suffer way too much, I think. Amen. Somebody say amen with me. Amen. Praise God. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Turn with me to John chapter 1. Most of you know what John chapter 1 is. John chapter one, verse one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then it says that he, he was, um, on down it says that he was the fullness. And he, he, he um, was God in the flesh. He came to show us who God is. You know, Jesus got 23 chromosomes from Mary. But then he got 23 chromosomes from God. You think his body wasn't alive with the name of God? He was not completely human. He was not completely God. He was, he was, a, he was the son of God. He was God in the flesh. I know we don't understand all that. You know, how could he be God when God was in heaven? And we, we don't understand the unity of God. We don't understand how God can be out of time and we're in time. We don't understand all that stuff. And that's where we just have to say, God, I love you, I trust you, and I know that you'll tell me that all one of these days. But he was God in the flesh. Amen. He was God in what? He was God in the flesh. He was manifest in the flesh. The little lady come up behind him. Had an issue of blood for 12 years. She crawled up behind him and touched his clothes. And power went through her body. You think the name of God wasn't activated inside every DNA strand of, of Jesus? I mean, every part of him, everywhere he went, things happened because he was, he was full of God. He was God. His body was created from God. Hallelujah. And then he made this statement that you're going to be like me. <laughs> wow. That just... That just that goes way beyond my ability to comprehend. Amen. He said, I'm going to send you another comforter. The word another means of like, kind, and character. In other words, I'm going to send you an exact, exact copy of who I am. And he was an exact copy of God. In Hebrews it says, he, he, was, he was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and so he showed forth the glory of God and, and Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the express image of Jesus and we today are living way below our abilities because there is one in us that is greater than what we are and he can activate us, amen. How many times has God called the DNA in my body back to him? I mean, straighten up. <laughs> and my, my body had to respond to that DNA, amen, hallelujah. There's a lot of people tell me that I shouldn't, I shouldn't have all those stories and testimonies because I should never get sick, and yet I've never seen them where I've been. I've never seen them doing what I've done. Come on, somebody. You get out there in the battle, you're gonna get hit. You're gonna, get, you're gonna take some licks. You're gonna have to fight back. You're gonna get stumped on every once in a while, but there's a God in heaven that can speak to the DNA in your body and say, get up, call for it. Hallelujah. The devil might think he just steamrolled you and all of a sudden you're like that can of biscuits. God pops you on the counter and you explode back into life, amen. <laughs> and, and the devil goes, oh! <laughs> I thought I had you down, and we just all of a sudden explode right back on the scene, and he, he starts, he starts saying, oh man, what's it gonna take to get rid of these people? Well, you can't get rid of us. <laughs> hey, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I'm trying to be calm tonight. This is, this is about more than, than I can take. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're made in the image and likeness of God. 
All things were made by him and through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That means you were made by him. He, he, he programmed your body. He programmed your DNA. He, he decided that we were worth his autograph. Hallelujah. I want you to grab hold of that tonight. God signed you. <laughs> God autographed your, your body. He autographed your DNA. He said, you're, I, I, think, I think I've created something good enough. I want to put my signature on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Artists only put their signature on something they think is finished and is good. And when we see those old pictures, some of them, I don't even know what they are, but if it's got the artist's name on them, they go for millions of dollars. Why? Because they were autographed by the creator. Hallelujah. I gotta tell you something. You're worth more than a million dollars. God, God has decided you're worth everything he has. You're worth everything he will ever have. You're worth the creation of all the world because he has signed you. He has autographed you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Praise God. I'm starting to realize, you know, how we recover from stuff and how, how the, you know, God made our bodies to, to repair themselves. When they don't repair themselves, there's a problem. Amen. Cancer is a problem. Cancer is a dark cell. It does not have, it does not have the, the translucent light of God's glory in it. That's why it destroys our bodies. Cancer is a darkness that infiltrates our body and begins to spread. And matter of fact, it actually is a deception because it deceives the body into believing that it should be there. And so the body starts protecting it with, with our immune system. Our body, those tumors start growing and our body jumps in and starts bl building blood vessels to it and, and starts protecting. That's, that's why they give you that, that, that poison. What is it? Huh? Chemo. That's why they give you that. They, they've got to try to kill everything and your immune system at the same time because your immune system will defend that cancer. Why? Because it has deceived the body into believing that it belongs there. And therefore, the body gives life to the very thing that's bringing death to the body. Man, they could preach, wouldn't it? Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why, that's why cancer is such a foul disease. It is, it is an ugly disease. It don't mean you're lost because you got cancer, but I'm talking about the characteristics of cancer is opposite of what God created us to be. And this world infiltrates our body and the poisons of this world and the things of this world infiltrates our body and starts putting out the light that's in our bodies. I hate cancer with a passion. I've seen it destroy some beautiful people. Amen. They went to heaven, I'll guarantee you. They knew Jesus. But I've seen cancer destroy some beautiful people. And it's like, it's like how, can we, how can we get our bodies to recognize that this is an enemy? It's a Trojan horse. It's a... It's, it comes in with a cloak and pretends it's one of us. We're living in a day in the church age today where cancer has come into the body of Christ and has tried to convince us that it belongs with us and it's not. It's bringing darkness to the body of Christ and we gotta wake up and say, God, help us to understand. Help us to identify that which does not belong in us. Amen. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff that does not belong in the body of Christ that is infiltrated into the body of Christ today. And it's got to be, it's got to, the light has to come on and reveal it. Amen. I was praying about this the other day. I said, God, how can we turn the light back on in these cancer cells? 
your light, your light, transform. Amen. I think we can. Amen. There's so much more to this than, than what we can even talk about tonight. Turn with me to the book of Mark. I have, well, no, I'm, I'm right there. Of course, I didn't look at the clock when I started. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there. That's, that's good. Mark chapter 1, verse 23. Oh, that, now, we're, now we're about to get into the good stuff. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. I want you to stop and think about that for a minute. A demon spirit has taken up residence, has literally bonded with the body of its host in every way, mind, spirit, mind, body, every, every way, and has, has taken control of this body. And yet Jesus said, come out of him, and the, the demon had to come out of him. And then he told us, he said, in my name you shall cast out devils. I've seen a lot of them come out, and I've seen a lot of them very angry that they were coming out. Amen. A lot of people get shook up when demons start manifesting. That's not time to get shook up. That's the time they're shook up. Amen. They're the ones that scared. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Jesus said to the man, or to the demon, come out of him, and he came out of him. And then he told us that we could do the same thing. Now we're talking about spiritual spirits bonding with bodies. Have you ever read where the devil could cast the Holy Spirit out of somebody? Why not? It's, it's spirit and body, and it's, super, it's power. No. He's never been able to do that, has he? He has to try to talk us into grieving the Holy Spirit in our life and walking away from him. Amen. That's the only way he can do it. But on the other hand, we can say to the spirit, come out of the person, and he has to obey. Why? Because we were created in the likeness and image of God. We were made by him, and without him, without anything made that was made, he is God in the flesh. We are one with him. What you, what, what you have to understand is our bodies belong to God, and any time a demon occupies a body, he is a trespasser and has no legal right to be there. It's like somebody moving into your house and they don't have the title deed. And you find them living in your house and you say, you have to move out. And they have to move out because you go get the law and you got the title deed and you say, this house belongs to me. It does not belong to you and now you have to move out. 
Why? Because God signed our bodies. We belong to him. We are his children. We are his people. Demons do not belong to us. We do not belong to them. They are trespassers. They are deceivers. And anytime the authority, the creator of our bodies assigned our DNA speaks, everything that is trespassing has to leave. Hallelujah. <laughs> You are a trespasser. Praise God. <laughs> oh, thank God. Amen. Every sickness that hits us is a trespasser. Amen. Praise God. And sometimes we have to call the high sheriff of heaven to come down and, and, and shove them out. They're stubborn. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We got to get some backup. There was one night when we were living in the parsonage over here that, that I, I was getting ready to go to bed and I was closing blinds and I just happened to notice a, an outside light came on out here behind the church. And so I looked out the window and I saw a man out there. It was summertime, and he had a long coat on and was, was, was holding one hand like this, one arm like this, had a coat draped. He didn't have it on, had it draped over his arm, over this hand, and he wasn't using that hand. And he reaches up, and he unscrews that light. And I thought, oh, yeah, you think you're sneaky, don't you? And so I couldn't tell what he had in that hand underneath the coat. And so he went around unscrewing all the security lights that he could reach. And then he come over and sit down on our porch. And so I picked up the phone and I, I called the sheriff's department. I said, hey, I got a guy up here that's unscrewing the security lights. And he's got, he's got a coat over his left hand. And I can't see what's in his left hand. And I'd appreciate it if you'd come check this out. I said, he's... They said, where's he at right now? I said, I'm, I'm looking at him. He's sitting on my porch. And I was standing on the other side of the glass door looking at him, sitting on our porch in the dark. And I kept watching, and pretty soon, lights started coming from every direction. I mean, the sheriff's department showed up. The highway patrol showed up. I mean, pe people that... I think the fire department showed up. I mean, everybody started showing up and lights started coming in and they turned all their lights on that guy right through here. All of a sudden, he was lit up and they jumped out of their cars with their guns and they were saying, stand up. He stood up. And they told him to get down on the ground. He got down on the ground and they come and checked him out. I don't know why he's carrying that big coat over that hand because he didn't have nothing in his hand. And when I saw that, I opened the door and I walked out there. <laughs> I walked out there and I said, son, what are you doing sitting on our porch unscrewing the security lights? I said, do you realize you could have been shot? Amen. You talking about brave. I had all those highway patrolmen and sheriff's department I mean, I went out there and took control because I had backup. <laughs> I was no longer behind the door. Now I was outside the door because I had backup. Hallelujah. Well, as children of God, every once in a while, we have to call for backup. And when we call for backup, God sends in the, the, the rescue team, amen. The sheriff of heaven shows up, the angels show up, and they start casting out devils. They start taking them down on the ground and arresting them, amen. <laughs> this last little deal I went through where the devil tried to, I don't know who tried to, something just went wrong in my body. I have no idea what happened. A gland malfunctioned and tried to kill me. Turned into a big, huge howl of blue. Amen. And so after they had to do emergency surgery, all that kind of stuff. And I was mad because I didn't want doctors saving me. I wanted God saving me, and I was mad. I woke up the next day, and I was, I was huffed up. 
because those doctors had to, had to cut on me. Oh, man, I was, I was torched. First time in my life that that's happened. I've always been able to beat it before I got there or else God just raised me up after I fall down. And then the next day they OD'd me in the hospital. Gave me too much medication. And, and, and I, was, I slipped away. And Betty saw that there was something wrong. Ran out and got the nurse. The nurse come in. I was catatonic. I, I, was, I was laying there just staring at the ceiling. No response. I, you know, they couldn't get any response out of me. Couldn't get me to react. Couldn't get anything. And, and so, you know, they thought I'd had a stroke. Thought I'd had a heart attack. They didn't know what happened to me. And so this nurse pushes a button and Betty said, next thing you know, there's about 15 people converged on that little hospital room. And they're checking everything. There, there was neurologists. There was nurses. There was, there was doctors. There was all kinds of people showed up. And then the chaplain showed up and started asking Betty how she's doing, saying, how you feeling, how you doing? And, and she, she said, I did not want to talk to him. He was not going to, this was not where I was going. <laughs> and she said, let's concentrate on him. <laughs> See, like, you come down here to do the last rites, you're wrong. <laughs> come find out they just, they just OD'd me on, on medicine. And uh, like a heroin addict. And, you know, so I was, I was, thankfully my wife was there, so they, they was able to bring me back. But the response team showed up. I've been thinking about that ever since. The response team showed up. Hallelujah. And then on a Sunday morning about 5.30, I got up early and I said, God, I'm tired of this. I don't want... I don't want this poison through my system. I don't want the, all the several surgeries they're saying they're going to have to do. I don't want all this stuff. God, I want to go to church. I want to get back. At, at 5 o'clock, that was at 5 o'clock, at 5.30, the response team showed up. In my house, the presence of God came in my house and began to heal me and drive the poison out of my body. And I got up and came to church that morning with a prophetic word from God. Why? Because the response team showed up. Amen. They... All of heaven said, hey, we got to get down there because somebody with the DNA of God in him is saying, I need help. And they showed up that morning and healing came to my body. I started recovering that very moment. I started recovering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Wow. This is hard on somebody that likes to preach. Amen. Rightful ownership, rightful property. Demons cannot stay in people because they have no rightful claim to the ownership of that body. God has already signed the DNA of that body. He has rightful ownership of that body. Same thing with healing. When Jesus, it says that Jesus just walked in to Peter's, I talked about this Sunday, Jesus just walked into Peter's mother-in-law's bedroom where she was sick with a fever and he just walked over and took her by the hand. Every cell in her body responded to the creator because the creator of that body, the one that signed that DNA was standing in the room and he took her by the hand and her DNA had no choice but to become well, to become healed. Our cells belong to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been enjoying this. I've been enjoying studying this. Our cells belong to God. Amen. Every cell in our body belongs to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In the latter in the latter day years of my life, I would like to I'd like to change from being the comeback kid because I, I've come back way too many times. 
I even wrote a book about it, how to be a comeback kid in a knockdown world. I mean, I've, I've come back way too many times. The enemy's tried to take me out way too many times. This started when I was a kid. Sandy, you remember walking down there by the lake and that guy started shooting at us? Was you with us down there? Maybe you wasn't with us. We was camping over Forsyth. Yeah. See, the cells in your body just responded. The, ce the cells in your brain just responded to the creator. <laughs> we were walking by the lake. The whole family was down there camping in this big field. We were walking by the lake, and all of a sudden, a, a, a fence post behind us exploded. And then we heard a shot, and we looked up, and there was a man standing up there with a rifle, and he was shooting at us kids. And all of a sudden, I heard a bullet zing right by my ear. You'll never forget that when you hear that. Amen. You ever heard? You've heard that, being in the military. I mean, it makes a weird noise. You know, just goes right by your head, and it's a weird sound. Instead of being the comeback kid in my latter years, I want to be like Pop Hagen. Oh, yeah. Amen. I've been thinking about this lately. You know, I, want to, I want to kind of transition. I've proven enough battles. <laughs> I've proven God can raise you from the dead. I've proven that God can heal you. I've proven all this stuff. I'd kind of like be like Pop Hagen. He, he, just, he just walked around happy and didn't, didn't get sick or nothing. It's like, you know, I'm kind of thinking I want to go that route for a little while. <laughs> hey, amen. You know why? Because the DNA in our body is signed by God, and I'm going to have to quit because I could just keep going. But, but the, the, our bodies respond to the owner and the creator. Hallelujah. We, when, when God shows up, I mean, he shows up. He lives in us. We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. I got that old Pentecostal terminology, when God shows up. He lives inside of us. But we don't always activate that. A lot of times we just, we just roll with the punches. Amen. We don't always activate it. Hallelujah. Lately I've been saying, God, this is how I fight my battles. I'm just going to give it to you. <laughs> Amen. Man, the battles don't stop coming, do they? Uh-uh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lately, I've been telling God to invade the hospitals and the insurance companies and deliver them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, oh, there's so much. We can just keep digging here, God. So much. Father, thank you that you've created us in your likeness and your image. Thank you, Father. <laughs> thank you, Lord God, that you have autographed your creation. And Lord, just like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration when he come into your presence, he began to glow brighter than the noonday sun because every DNA strand in his body lit up with your glory. The name of Yahweh began to shine. And Father, I thank you that we, we are your sons and daughters as well. And we belong to you, Lord God, and we have been filled with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I pray tonight that this revelation can go deep in our hearts, Lord God. Lord, I want it, I want it to become transformative in my life. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for every person here tonight that's struggling, Lord God, that your DNA would just begin to glow inside of them. 
Father, I pray for every person that's struggling in their minds and their souls, Lord God, that the DNA and the, and the, the, the knowledge and wisdom of God would just begin to glow inside of them, Father God. Father, I pray for anyone that's sick and afflicted in his house tonight, Lord God, that your DNA, your glory, your autograph in us would just begin to shine and respond to the Creator and begin to, to change into the image of the Creator. Father, we, we curse cancer in Jesus' name. This, this disease of darkness, this disease that turns our bodies dark, we curse it in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for the deliverance from this poison in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory.
Gonna soak in the light of a moment, gonna soak in the light of his glory, we're gonna soak in the light of his revelation, soak in the light of our Father, soak in the light of our salvation. Your word 
is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Your word, the entrance of your word, it brings light. The entrance of your word. The entrance of your word. The entrance of your intimate relationship God we take you by the hand and we come into relationship with the light with the light with the light with the light of your face God shine the light of your countenance on us the light of your countenance on us oh we come on in oh relationship with the light relationship even deeper even more intimate even more intimate even more even more let us be one let us be one let us be one with the light let us be one with you O oh light O oh father of light this you want this Lord you want this more than we want this you're calling us and drawing us father deeper 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 into intimacy tonight 
You're drawing us into intimate places tonight, intimate places with your light, intimate places into revelation and understanding into the knowledge of you, into the knowledge of you. That we might know you, know you, know you. We might walk with you, walk with you, dance with you, know you, know you. upon you Jesus fill us with light tonight fill us with light right now fill us with light right now right now we open our spirit our heart our mind our body everything about our being God all about us God in you in you we live we move we have our being in you we live and move we have our being in you in you in you in you in you in you we live, in you we move, in you we move, we move, and in you we have our entire being, God. We have our physical body and our minds in you. We have our spirit and our emotions in you, in you, in you. Wrap around, God. Wrap around, God. Put us on as a cloak. Put us on as a cloak, Lord God. Put us on as your cloak, Lord God. Sanctify us, set us apart. Sanctify us and set us apart, Father. We will not yield ourselves. We will not yield our minds and our thoughts and our actions to this world. We'll not lend our fascinations to this world, Lord God. I thank you that we are wholly, 100% given to you. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you've come to walk with us into this journey of full sanctification unto our Father. Full sanctification, full sanctification. The Lord, this night we walk away even more fully sanctified, even more fully set apart, even more full of joy than we were before. I thank you, Father, the light of your glory, the light of your presence is displacing the darkness of depression, the darkness, God, of dark fascinations. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord. It's calling us into the light. That we're coming out of compromise into the light. Out of compromise now into the light. Out of compromise. Oh, Father, let a line be drawn. Let our hearts not want to go there anymore. In Jesus' name, that we will not sacrifice Sacrifice. We will not sacrifice the full light of God for anything in this world. But Father God, we are fully, fully committed in Jesus' name. We're fully yours, fully yours, fully yours, God. Thank 
thank you, Lord. And we want this. We want this. It's not a struggle. We don't want it. We don't want it. We don't want it. We want you. We want you. We want you. Yes, God. Yeah. Yes, God. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Oh, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you for your light, God. Let it fill our homes, God. Not just this room, but God, we thank you that our homes are sanctified. Our relationships with our spouses and our children are sanctified. Our homes belong to you. Light in our homes, God. Compromise out of our homes, God. I thank you. Let there be an altar built in each home tonight. An altar, God, in each home, Father. A meeting place in each home where you dwell and reside with us and in us. Kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. your people tonight. Hear the cry of your lovers tonight.
says if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you then that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies amen praise God I don't know about you but I want my the cells in my body sinking Yahweh <laughs> hallelujah amen singing Yahweh father I ask you Lord God to activate us in our spirit, in our souls, in our bodies. Lord, every part of our being, declaring your glory, declaring your name. And Father, we thank you for that. God, we just rejoice tonight in the fact, Lord God, that you you signed us, Lord God. You autographed us. And Father, we just thank you tonight. Father, we call that alive, that healing power, that restoring power, that Lord, that, uh, that making alive of the Spirit of God in our bodies and in our minds and our spirits, our souls, every part, Lord God. Hallelujah, that we be renewed in the spirit of our minds, Father. Lord, every part of us, singing glory unto your name, declaring glory unto your name. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Father. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I believe I'm going to look out here one of these Sundays and y'all are going to look like a bunch of LED light bulbs. <laughs> just, just glowing. Hallelujah. That happens. Amen. I was preaching over in the Philippines and... and Betty Jane told me after service, she said, Pastor, do you realize you glow when you preach here? I said, no, I didn't know that. She said, you do. She said, you just literally start glowing. Hallelujah. I said, well, it's fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love to preach in the Philippines. They are, they are such a receptive people. I'd, I'd preach to rocks. I mean, you know. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for regeneration in the body in the body of Christ Lord that every 
part, every cell of your body, the church would begin to declare your name and celebrate who you are. And Father, I thank you for that. God, as we go home tonight, Lord God, I thank you that you fill our homes, you fill our cars. Lord God, you fill our lives. Everywhere we go, Father God, your presence goes with us. We have descended from you, we're of you, we're in you and through you. And Father, I thank you for manifesting the works of God in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So um, next week, we don't have anybody to run sound because everybody's going on vacation. So we're not having service next week, but the following week we are. So just want to let you know. So um, Pastor and Sister Betty are going on vacation, and so are Damon and Betty, and... Larry and I are going and some time away, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, this was awesome. Thank you so much. And I remember the first time listening to somebody giving their testimony. And I was just a kid at, uh, well, yeah, I was probably about 14, something like that. And I heard that somebody giving their testimony at the Methodist Church in Branson. And I remember thinking, why does he glow like that? It, yeah, you could see that aura around him. And it, yeah. You know, we, we are like lights out there. And even if you don't see it in yourself, you are a light out there. And you are making a difference. So I just want to say, y'all be blessed. And we'll see you in two weeks. I won't, but um, everybody else will be here. <laughs> Thank you, and happy birthday to you.